Verizon's first quarter results just out this morning. The company actually beating estimates by three cents with, a, with adjusted quarterly profit of $1.15 a share. You can see the stock right now up by close to 2.4%. The chairman and the CEO, Hans Vesberg, is here to talk more about it. And Hans, thanks for coming in today. Thank you. Great to be here as usual. Great to see you. Good morning. So what happened? Uh, numbers were better than the street was expecting, even though the revenue was just about in line. Yeah, but uh, what we're focused on, of course, is service revenue. Uh, continued momentum since the second quarter last year. Now our service revenue growth was up 3.3 percent compared to one little bit over one last year in this first quarter. Good momentum in our consumer business. Continue with our offerings that is really uh, sounding well with our consumers. And then on the business side, on the wireless, we've been growing all the time. And then we're adding our broadband business. We're around 400, almost 400,000 new net ads for the quarter that we have had for three, four quarters right now. Actually, we have added 18 percent more broadband subscribers in one year. We have just passed 11 million. So actually, all our businesses, are, our strategy is working, actually. And we had our challenges in 22. We didn't really perform. We did a lot of changes in the team, how we're offering to our products to our customers. So um, it was a good quarter, continued good momentum for us. Yeah, subscriber base, broadband subscribers up 389,000. As yeah. you mentioned, it's been, I think it's been five quarters in a yes. row now of about 400, north of yeah. just, just north of 500 or 400. Um, what do you have to do right now to get those subscribers? Is part of it the streaming services that you guys have been pretty aggressive about partnering up with, Disney Plus? Yeah, and we have exclusive distribution services. So I think what we have is, for the consumer side, very clear my plan, which actually offering to our customer different type of network solutions. And then on top of that, we have inclusions with perks, everything. Right now, we're running Netflix and Max. Only us can do that. Re really working well with our customers. It's also a saving for our customers. So we just stack new uh, additions and value for our customers, and that's also how we expand our expand our ARP with our customers, our average revenue per user. Uh, but we give more value as well. So that's just continue that more innovation. I think the team has innovated really good on the consumer side. On the business side, we have been taking share for uh, for a very long time. We are number one on large enterprises. We are number one on SMBs and the government when it comes to wireless. So we have a very solid position in the market and, of course, generating the highest EBITDA in the market as well. This quarter, $12.1 billion. Can you, can you give us any guidance in terms of what you expect broadband growth to be this year or wireless growth? I think what we have said, we, we really, on the broadband side, we, we like being around 400,000. We think that's good because you optimize your efficiency, your capital, how you deploy it. So we like that number. When it comes to growth on, uh, on wireless, what we have said, we're going to be positive this year on consumer net ads. Uh, business side is basically positive on wireless net ads all the time. But consumer this year is going to be positive. We had actually our strongest year in consumer net ads in Q1 since 2018. And that's a, year, it's a quarter when we see what's happening around us. We see inflation, high interest rate. We actually have our best first quarter since 2018 on consumer side. We've been talking to you for years about the growth uh, of and what would happen with fixed line wireless. Yes. The idea that uh, folks would have uh, wireless broadband effectively to the home directly bypassing uh, cable. Of course, Comcast, uh, an owner of this network, so we have a, a unique interest in this, but I think a lot of people do. Where are you really on that product? The product is resonating extremely well with the market. I mean, it's an easy to install uh, as you install it yourself. It's self-installed. It takes you five minutes to have broadband at home. And it works in any type of uh, uh, setup in the house right. or in residential. So, it's, so the rollout is going really well. And as we turn on our C-band that we bought uh, for two years ago, then we see the opportunity in every market. But not, but not yet. Oh, we see it right now. I mean, of the uh, almost uh, 400,000 new net ads this quarter, the majority comes from fixed wise access. Uh, Fios was a little bit over 50,000 new net ads. The rest is fixed wise access. And it's not only for consumers. Think about that. Historically, we thought the idea of 5G to the home as broadband was mainly a consumer product. Today, we sell to small and medium businesses. We have the. And you can get enough throughput? 
for a, for a oh, small business? Yeah, yeah, we guarantee 300. So it's, it's an extraordinary great experience. Our MPS is skyrocketing on fixed wise access. Hans, if you're getting so many subscribers right now, broadband and beyond, is that a reflection of a strong economy? You say it, it's despite inflationary costs. What do you see just in terms of the health of the consumer? Uh, a couple of things. First of all, I see the same thing that everybody reads and what you are reporting here every morning. I think, first of all, our product, wireless and broadband, is so important for every individual, for every organization. I mean, you cannot live without it today. So our product is moving up. Secondly, our segmentation and uh, having products for all the way from low-income families to uh, some more advanced plan, both on broadband and wireless, means that we can address the whole market. So. I think that's, uh, and then our quality of customers is the highest in the market. So, so far, we haven't seen any impacts on uh, our customers' payment readiness. They have been, they are, they are stable. So, uh, which is probably a bit different from other uh, consumer uh, brands. But I think the strength of the product, the strength of, uh, of Verizon's customer base, uh, and the segmentation we have done. One thing you and the other telecom companies are all pretty um, aligned on is pushing back against some of the federal regulations to give access to lower income consumers at, at, at price caps for your product. Where does that stand right now? So the, there is the program ACP, uh, which is the government has, is a subsidized for low income families. It seems like that will not be renewed. We have plans. We have Fios uh, that is efficient for or low cost for, uh, for low income families. Of course, we have the full breadth of prepaid wireless that is also addressing that. So we will continue to address that uh, uh, opportunity and see that everyone in this country, regardless who they are, should have access access to wireless and broadband. But you don't want the federal government to push you to do this? this no, this is a segmentation for us. I mean, I have products for all types of uh, individuals, organizations uh, on wireless and broadband. I mean, we are number one in this market by far. And our job is to see that we address all the opportunities in the market, and that we do. Think about it. We build the network once, and we want as many profitable connections on top of it to get the best return on invested capital. That's what we're doing.